In the early years of the Cold War, one idea obsessed military planners more than any other, speed. Speed to deploy, speed to attack, speed to respond. But what if a fighter jet didn't need a runway at all? What if it could take off vertically, like a rocket, and land on its tail? This is the story of the Convair X-5-1 Pogo, one of the strangest aircraft ever built, and why it never made it past the prototype stage. It was the early 1950s. The US Navy faced a real problem. Traditional aircraft carriers were vulnerable, and landing and launching jets required long runways and complex systems. In a full-scale war, especially one involving nukes, large air bases might be destroyed in minutes. So the Navy asked a bold question. Could we design a fighter that could take off and land vertically, without a runway, from anywhere, even the deck of a small ship? The solution? A VTOL aircraft. Vertical, takeoff, and landing. Several companies jumped at the challenge. Lockheed built the XFV Salmon. Convair proposed something even more radical the XFY-1, later known as the Pogo. The Convair Pogo was a machine that looked more like something out of Flash Gordon than a real combat aircraft. The basic idea was this, build a fighter that could take off and land like a rocket, but fly like a conventional propeller-driven airplane once in the air. To do that, Convair mounted a massive Allison YT-40 turboprop engine, a beast with over 5,000 horsepower, inside a tall, narrow fuselage. At the top set two enormous contra-rotating propellers, spinning in opposite directions to cancel out torque and maintain stability. It had small stubby wings, high mounted for clearance, and three landing legs with wheels at the tips, so it could balance vertically on the ground, like a pogo stick, hence the name. This aircraft didn't just fly, it launched. But even on paper, the design pushed the limits of what was possible. Aerodynamics, stability, pilot orientation, everything about the pogo was a question mark. The first test began in 1954 at Brownfield in California. Convair hired one of the Navy's best test pilots, James Skeets Coleman, to fly the thing. And he'd need every ounce of skill he had. Testing started with tethered hovers. The aircraft anchored to the ground with cables to prevent it from tipping or veering off. These were cautious, delicate experiments. The propellers created immense torque. The engine screamed. The aircraft vibrated like it wanted to tear itself apart. Eventually, after weeks of these rehearsals, Coleman was ready. He took the Pogo into free flight, straight up off the ground. And it worked. The Pogo lifted vertically, then transitioned to horizontal flight, a process that required careful throttle control, precise timing, and nerves of steel. It flew like a normal airplane, sort of. But returning to Earth? That's where the real trouble began. To land, Coleman had to bring the plane to a hover, tail down, and then slowly descend. There was no modern HUD, no computer assistance. He had to look over his shoulder the entire time, trying to judge his height and alignment with the ground rapidly approaching. There were no cameras, no radar altimeters, just a man in a tiny cockpit, guessing. Each landing was a high-stakes balancing act. The pogo behaved like a mechanical bull. Any gust of wind or overcorrection could send it spiraling. It flew successfully, but it was clear from day one, this aircraft was not meant for average pilots. Despite several successful test flights, the program quickly ran into the cold wall of reality. The first major issue was landing visibility. With no forward-facing reference during vertical descent, the pilot was nearly blind to his surroundings. Landing was not just difficult, it was borderline dangerous, even in perfect conditions. Then came the control issues. The Pogo was underpowered for quick transitions. The lag in engine response meant that minor mistakes were amplified, and there was little room for error when you're hovering tail down at 50 feet in the air. Another issue, fuel. VTOL flight requires huge amounts of energy just to stay aloft. The Pogo burned through fuel quickly, giving it very limited operational range. But the final nail in the coffin was technological progress itself. Jet aircraft were advancing fast, faster than the Pogo could ever hope to keep up with. And new catapult systems made launching jets from carriers easier and safer. Suddenly, the Navy didn't need vertical takeoff fighters anymore, and no one, no one wanted to land one of these things on the back of a rolling ship. By 1956, the Pogo was done. The Lockheed XFV was also shelved. The Navy quietly walked away. The Convair XFY-1 Pogo was a bold solution to a very real problem, but it was ahead of its time and a little too weird for the world it was born into. Today, it survives only in museums, a gleaming silver rocket plane with a wild dream behind it. It was strange, it was bold, and though it never made it into service, it paved the way for future VTOL concepts, from the Harrier to the F-35. In the race to innovate, not every idea flies forever, but some, like the Pogo, fly just long enough to become legends.